great. He made it all. Yes. And in the beginning, everything was just paradise in the garden. The garden of Eden. Come on, somebody. Tell me you know what I'm talking about. And you're so looking for the time when you can walk again with God, when you can have fellowship and friendship with him. But see, something happened. Many, many counts of countless years ago, something happened. There was a there, there was a little uprising in the garden. And it caused an upset. Adam and Eve were escorted right out of the garden. No, no longer would they be there. Because they had broken trust. You see, many say that doubt is a sin. No, it's what doubt leads to. Doubt leads to unbelief. And unbelief is sin. The sad thing is, is that it would seem that many of us, like Adam and Eve, well, especially Adam, has committed a greater sin. Because the Bible says that he said with his eyes open, Did you come this morning? Did you come this morning with your eyes open? Did you come this morning expecting to see someone, to, to receive something? Did you come because, they, they, listen, they, because uh, you expected to hear from God? You came this morning perhaps because, you know, I, uh, my walk is not what it should be. Uh, I, I walk in the, with a mic that's cool. No, it's cold in Michigan. Come on, sometimes. <laughs> It's cold. The sun is shining, but I still, wait a minute, maybe you can identify with this with just taking the natural, and maybe you can identify with this right now. You say, you know what? The sun is shining, but it's still cold. Amen. Amen. Uh, I, I can preach right there. Amen. Some of us, the sun is shining, but we're still cold. Some of us, the sun is shining, but our hearts are still a little bit hard. Can I tell you that the Lord has come to do something? Uh, get this now. He didn't come just to break your heart. He came to give you a new heart. Amen. Oh, and the Word became flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Can we just worship the Lord for a while this morning?
little tough, tough time when it comes to get the flesh to succumb to the spirit of worship. Brothers, I, I just don't want, I don't want to be too loud. I might miss a note. And, 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 and God knows. How many of you know so many times we falsely <laughs> testify? And God knows. Wait a minute. Oh, he does know. And God knows I can't carry a tune. Wait a minute. Does he really... Is he really worried about that? No. no. Is, is he really concerned? Why are we so concerned? Let me tell you. Let me tell you what happens here. The, the problem we have is still a problem with pride. It's a sin of pride. And, uh, and getting this a false humility. So I just don't have the giftedness. I can't sing. Wait a minute. Is there a command? No, there's a command to what? Make some noise. I always, I always like to think that whoever we're standing next to in the heavenly choir, that's who our voice is going to match. Right? Somebody say praise, praise the Lord. How many of you know right now you should be standing next to Jesus in the heavenly choir? Amen. Amen. Come on now. Yes. So when we sing these songs, don't muddle through, especially, well, I don't know the words. That's why we put them on the wall. Oh, come on. They're right there before you. Well, uh, maybe, maybe you could admit, maybe some of you are challenged. You say, well, uh, maybe you can't see the words. Move closer. Come on. Uh, <laughs> just so you know, we're here to serve. We're here to enable you. Get this. We're here to enable you to be able to worship. Uh, we're here to, to help in, in many cases to, to take off the restraints. Whatever's holding you back from worshiping. And if I need to come down here and I need to, to take your hands and say, come on, brother, let's worship the if I need to be your cheerleader, if I need to provoke you, if I need to encourage you, wait a minute, that's what we're here to do, to provoke one another to love and good works. Can I tell you one of the greatest work that we can do? Worship the Lord. Let's worship Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Lord, teach me how to flow. 
And maybe that's what we're here for this morning, to help one another to learn what it means to live in faith, to flow in the Spirit, to love like Jesus. Love like Jesus. It seems, Brother Mike, that we're really easy to uh, learn how to love like a Pharisee. It's really easy. You know, it's just basically everybody just, everybody march and step. And if you can march and step, if you're, you'll be all right. If you can just keep the rules, if you can just obey everything, you can just be all right. Did you know, though, that isn't what it's about? Can I tell you this morning, and this is going to just blow your mind. I'm, I'm about to blow your mind. You ready? Life is messy. Wow. Come on, life is messy. Uh, life is not, it, it seems as if life is kind of chaotic, but can I tell you that what, after today, I hope that perhaps maybe you'll have a better understanding that life is not so chaotic as we make it out to be. How many think God knows what's going on? Amen. He is sovereign, he's in control. Well, if he was in control, then why this, that, and the other thing? The question you might want to ask is why this, that, and the other thing for yourself? Amen. Why do we question others? No, wait. What, what did Jesus tell his disciples when, when they were questioning certain people that were doing certain things in the name of him? He says, what's that to you? You follow me. Now, I'm going to tell you this morning, I'm going to lay this out before we go to our next song. Every one of us will follow Jesus in the same direction, but we'll go about it a little differently. Some will move at different paces. Some of us are going to, listen, we're going to, we're going to stumble a little bit here and there. there you go. Most all of us will probably look like we just don't have it all together. Oh, wait a minute. Can I tell you, life is messy. And sometimes it seems chaotic. And on a time like this, our celebrations, let's, let's set aside some busyness. We're going to have some things going on during the service this morning that... We're going to involve some, some people, and they may not hear every word that the preacher has to say, but I promise you this, they're going to get what they need to hear. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen? We're going to make, have some observances today that some of us are going to have a better understanding of what these things mean Amen. better than others. And over the last few weeks, I've been sharing our traditions. I've been sharing some of the things that we do. I've been sharing about Christmas trees. I've been sharing about this, that, and the other thing. I've been sharing about all the fairy tales, but I've also been underscoring the fact that we need to recognize those things that have been used only to showcase what we're really here for. It is a happy holiday. Yes, it is. But it's when everything began afresh. Everything was going to be brand new. It's a time for starting over. Somebody say, praise the Lord, I can use that. Right now. I can use that. It's new life. New life has come to man. A promise being fulfilled. Come on, man. How many of you think that God has made a promise that he's about to fulfill something in your life? Yes, amen.
It is not any, his desire that anyone should be left behind. And get this, it was never his, this, it was not his desire that anybody should be left alone. Yeah. Right from the very beginning, what did he say in Genesis? It's not good that man should be alone. <laughs> and, the, and the women all said, Amen. Someone's got to watch after those guys. But seriously, think about all the things that are being done at this at this season and, and, and other times. But I just want to uh, to right now speak to you and tell you how grateful I am for your involvement. Sister Linda, you have some words? I have just a, a few. I read an article in the Church Evangel magazine uh -huh. that the Church of God Orphanage home started with one woman and four children. Yep. Years ago, she had compassion for these children. She took them in. They weren't hers. Just like our our uh, Christ mother, you know, she didn't know she was going to have this child, but God gave her the and gave her trust to take care of this child that was raised. She was raised to be our King, our Lord and Savior. And so this yeah. dear woman took these four children into her home, and. That's how this Church of God orphanage got started. It went from there, it grew, and they finally had to have a place to go. So then the church got involved and started a home for these children. Amen. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask something right now if, uh, if, 